Hey, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be doing the first part of my March wrap up. Now it has been a month. It has just been, you know, pollen has invaded. So like I brought the Clarentin D and all this stuff. So hopefully I won't sound too bad to you guys. But if you, if I like mumble and have horrible vocal fry, I'm sorry. It just cannot be helped at this point. Um, so I'm going to attempt to use words today and talk to you about some of the books that I read uh, in March because I'm really excited about them. Now before we get into that, I wanted to draw your attention to a few books I'm not going to be talking about right here on the channel right now. Hold on. Okay. First up is a debut by Janet Aliu. This is Brass and it's out from Random House. We did a Q&A with Janet Aliu over on The Reading Woman because I really enjoyed this debut and she features uh, working class characters and it's about a mother and daughter and we follow their narratives at the same age like in alternating perspectives and it's just a really solid well done debut and I just really enjoy what she does and there's something about the way she writes that I just enjoy so uh, definitely check out that q and I'll link it down in the description box down below. Now two books that I am going to be doing review videos on because they're probably my favorites of the month and that is All the Names They Use for God by Anjali Satchdeva. Uh, this is a book that I just I just really love this book and we talked to her on the podcast we were able to interview her and just great hearing uh, some behind the scenes things about this book. So I will link that interview down below and stay tuned for my review video. And another book that I'm going to be doing a video review on is the short, the Stella Prize shortlisted novel uh, The Life to Come by Michelle de Kretzer and this is out from Catapult. And this novel, I just can't stop thinking about it. I'm absolutely fascinated and it's not a perfect novel. Like I can see some things, especially like this is in my wheelhouse. It's very much the styles like Ali Smith or Virginia Woolf into the lighthouse or Mrs. Dalloway and that's just my favorite style. So I will say I am biased in that sense but I just really enjoyed this novel and I loved getting a look at Australian politics and just that in an Australian setting and yeah I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to be talking about that more in a separate video. Uh, but yeah, so stay tuned. So let's get into the books that I did read and want to talk about a little bit. Um, first up is one that I've already mentioned, so I'll just, you know, spare you the, the longer version, but this is Circe by Madeline Miller. I really love what Madeline Miller does with mythology and the different stories, which are often contradictory. She's able to streamline it in this novelized version of, of these myths that are just there about these big characters. And one of those characters is Circe. She is most well known for being in the Odyssey. She's a witch on this island and she turns men to pigs. And Odysseus comes and she uh, and he have an affair. Um, they eventually have a son and just a lot of different things um, that are in other myths around her. Now she is related to a lot of famous people. Um, so her niece is Medea and uh, Ariadne and just a bunch of different people. So <laughs> it's, it can get complicated. So I will say, well, I did love this. And this was like a Kendra book, 100%. If you don't know much about mythology or a lot of the different myths and how they intersect, this could be confusing and you'll probably be Googling a lot, but, um, overall, I think it's a great novel. It's so enjoyable. And again, I am looking forward to that inner, like that talk between her, Madeline Miller and Emily Wilson, who, translated the odyssey that i keep gushing about i'm so looking forward to that podcast i cannot wait i think it's may when it comes out but um just counting down the days uh, and and following on the heels of that we have mary beard's women in power and i wanted to continue my mythology look but i want to do it in a non-fiction way mary beard actually gave two lectures the first one about women and their voices and how they've been silenced over the course of history and the other one was women in power and in both of those lectures she has uh, these examples from antiquity and how basically from mythology forward, you know, like, you know, from the tales of mythology forward, how women have been silenced or how, you know, their view in power, like women aren't supposed to be in power or their ways of leadership just aren't well masculine enough, quite frankly. And I really loved what she did. And I've seen some people say they wanted more from the book, but I felt like these are just printed lectures. Like they're not actually structured and formatted books. So I would really like to see her write a longer book on it, but for just the lectures and taking them as they are, as a brief, like boiled down nutshell of this idea, I really enjoy them and definitely would recommend this book. And then another book that I read and really enjoyed is The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America. And this is out from Live Right Publishing. I think it came out last year, year before, I'm not sure. 
Uh, but this is the second book in Samuel and I's Spouse Book Club. We ended up taking two months for Stamp from the Beginning because it was like 500 and 600 pages long. And then Samuel's still reading this one. Um, I really enjoyed this book. We, re we, read, we both read Evicted last year um, by Matthew Desmond. And this one I feel like is a great pair with that one because it also talks about um, housing and the housing crisis. But it looks at it from a more historical perspective rather than a current like follow people around narrative perspective. So I'm going to see if I can have words to describe what this book does. Uh, but what he does is he looks at history and how America has systematically segregated uh, their housing and how that has affected African Americans specifically throughout history and how it was such so intentional and how all of this has been swept under the rug. It's not even history books and how people were allowed to deny people housing even if they could pay for it and how like for example uh, an African-American family might move into the neighborhood because they had enough money to move in and then you know there would be like the white flight and you know they would leave and then the housing would lower in value. There's all the different things that happen throughout history and Rothstein takes a more academic perspective and then he uses people as examples but his approach is definitely more from studies and history and different things and I really really have enjoyed this book. Um, I listened to the audiobook on RB Digital and I thought it was really well done as well. Um, there are a lot of notes in the back and extra resources if you're looking into this um, but I feel like I'm just gonna stop talking about it now because the book will explain itself way more than I ever could. So those are all the books that I'm going to talk about in the first part of this wrap up. If you have read any of these, definitely let me know if you have thoughts on them or any other recommendations of read-alikes or different things. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, but until next time, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.